worship music real quick. They won't get enough. I'm going to lead us in worship again. <laughs> Just leave. I want to read this last thing that we just sang. It says this, Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns. Hallelujah, our God reigns forever. All my days, hallelujah. And, and I want to make a point. Uh, do you know it all belongs to God? Yes. Everything. Everything belongs to God. Does this world look like it belongs to God? No. Is it still God's? Yes. 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 We're going to talk about some parables this morning. And it comes from Luke. If you want to start turning there and I'll start, I guess we'll call it preaching. Start running my mouth. As we turn to these, these stories in Luke, it's going to be chapter 15. Uh, we find that Jesus is in earlier in the chapter 14, coming into this story, these parables. Jesus once again finds himself causing some trouble. Wasn't he good at that? Yeah. Causing some trouble. And we find him once again dining with some Pharisees, dining with some scribes. And, and I believe a message recently has been preached on this, but uh, lo and behold, there just happens to be some random sick man at the table. And Jesus knows this is the Sabbath day. And here they go again, trying to set me up, trying to get me in trouble, and trying to prove that I am, I'm not from God because the, the coming Messiah has to be perfect and flawless, and the coming Messiah cannot break God's command. Here they go again, <coughs> trying to set me up. And what does Jesus do? He ministers. And what does ministry do to the world that's coming against us? Shuts them up. Yeah. And it says it's a people. They had that man planted. It's not in the Word, but the guy, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I say, the guy, once he's healed, what does he do? Does he hang around because he's in his company of his friends? That guy is out of there. He is gone. His job was done. And when he leaves, Jesus says, what man in here? If you didn't have something that you loved in pain, or I think of my children. If my children get hurt on the Sabbath day, whatever day I choose, Yesterday was our Sabbath, and I'm praising God that I have the power and authority over my family to say, we're extending it to today, because we need extra rest. So I've talked to people, everybody seems tired today. I've already got um, commission from several members that if, uh, if I see them falling asleep, to, to call them out, to get some elbows and some nudges. So we're tired, and, and on this Sabbath day, he heals this man, he does this ministry, and he says, if you love somebody... If you love something, who in here would not help out that something, whatever it is, on the Sabbath? Yes. Are you going to let your donkey bleed out on the Sabbath? No. And, he, and it completely, ministry completely shut him up. And so then later on, he, he, can, he just starts teaching. He starts teaching these people, and then he gets his disciples. as they're, They've left that setting. They're traveling. He goes into these parables. Because he starts causing another ruckus. If you look in chapter 15... At the very beginning, he, he starts causing another scene that says in, in verse 1, that all the tax collectors, all the sinners, they did what to Jesus? They drew near to Jesus. And the Pharisees and the scribes complained that people would recognize a problem in their life and want to seek out Jesus. So, Jesus once again causing problems by doing what He came to do. Ministry. Loving people. And so He starts to teach parables. And he starts to teach about a lost coin. He starts to teach about a lost sheep. And he starts to teach about a lost son. There's one underlying message and theme that goes through those three parables. God values and loves repentance. He does not care about your status. He does not care about who you are. He does not care where you are. Whether you're a, a lost tax collector, sinning harlot, on your way, dying, going to hell, or where you're one of the redeemed that has lost their way. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to look at that third parable, the lost son. And I'm going to do everything within my power to preach it in a way we've never heard, um, which is probably scary. It scares me more than it should scare y'all. Um, and it's going to be a lot of similarities, but I want to draw out something because I think a lot of times this, this younger son, um, we look at him and say, Oh, he's the prodigal. 
You know, he's the one that, that went astray. He, they're both sons, right? right? He's the son that just, he's a bad child. You know, every family's got one, right? And they say he went astray. He did his thing. And, oh, yeah, he wants to repent and come back. And Jesus is using this illustration to teach his people, his followers. It does not matter whether you're the, the son that goes astray to a foreign land and wants to come back. You know, I think a lot of times I look at my life and go, dang, I didn't get to go all wild, man. You know, I didn't get to go and have all that fun that I hear about. I had to stay at the Father's house and work in His field. Whether you're going to the foreign land or whether you're in close proximity to the Father and in His shelter and working in His fields, we are all on the same mission. And so we have to understand that the prodigal, while I believe he made some crucial and critical errors, we are no different. That we live. Y'all agreed with me when I asked the question. I set y'all up. I set you up before we even got started. Not intentionally, it just happened. But we live in what I would call a foreign land. Yes. We believe as Christians that we are ambassadors for Christ. Ambassadors from a place called heaven. This is not our home. So it's I, our home that we live in is not our home. That when we wake up in the morning, we are waking up into a foreign and lost desert land. A dry land. God owns this land. This land is His land. This place is His kingdom. It is our job, whether we, we're saying we are in the foreign land, but whether we go or whether we're close to home, wherever we are, it is our job to make this land, this God-forsaken right place look like heaven. That is our job. And I want to look at today the prodigal. And I hope that when we leave today we all realize we all need to repent. That we all need to be in a place where we say, man, I look at this story and think, wow, riotous, wasting, you know, squandering away wealth. When in reality, if God gives us a gift and we do not use it, we are the prodigal. We are the one that is not using what God has given us properly and appropriately to build His kingdom. So we're going to go through the Scripture. This has been a long week, y'all. If you're tired, I'm not going to do the thing where I say I'm tired, but I feel like I'm tired. <laughs> and it's been a long week, and I think sometimes the Lord um, honors when we just come to Him and say, I can't do it. I don't have anything to say. Will you just use me? Will you just proclaim whatever you got to say? So I, I pray that uh, we're not going to stop and just pray. I'm just going to say, I'm praying God will use me to proclaim something today that means something to you and will change your heart so that you can be more effective for His kingdom. That's what we're trying to accomplish here. We want to be kingdom builders. The kingdom's made. We, we just need to build it up to make it look like heaven. So let's start. We're going to start with the parable of the lost son. It's in, in Luke chapter 15, verse 11. This is where it starts. And y'all be so thankful. I didn't have time to study much. So there's only like a couple places we're going to go this morning. It's like no Bible drills, none of that. Um, but I am going to read in Romans a whole bunch. So I'm going to make up for not flipping and just catch it all at the end of one place. So if you see anybody nodding off going to sleep, hit them. <laughs> Preferably not in the face. We don't want any bloody noses today. So the parable of the lost son. I like calling it that, not the prodigal, but the lost son. He's wayward. Um, he lost his way. So it says this. We're going to read it all. Um, we're going to go back through. It says, Then he said, A certain man, so this is Jesus, had two sons. Two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portions of goods that falls to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. Not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and journeyed to a far country. And there wasted his possessions of prodigal living. When he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him to the fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. When he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? 
I will arise and I will go to my father and say to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and I've sinned against you and I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me one of your hired servants. Keyword, like. Make me like one. He can't lose his sonship. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was a great way off, his father saw him. He had compassion and he ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I've sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Bring out the best robe. Put it on him and put a ring on his hand. Sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. Let us eat and be merry. For this is my son. He was dead. Now he's alive. He was lost and he is found. And they began to be merry. Now his older son was in the field. As he came and drew near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked, What are these things? And he said to him, Your brother has come. And because he's received him safe and sound, your father's killed the fatted calf. But he was angry. He would not go in. Therefore the father came out and pleaded with him. So he answered and said to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I've never transgressed your commandment at any time. And yet you never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the fatted calf for him. And he said to him, Son, you are always with me, and all that I have is yours. It is right that we should make merry and be glad. Your brother was dead, now he is alive again. He was lost, and now is found. So let's go back through. I know that's a lot to take in, and we're going to break this down. I'm not going to go through every single scripture, but I have a very few key points that I believe need to be made. Um, one, if not the only one, uh, the world is in dire need of our gifts. God has given us gifts. He has given us talents. He has given us blessings. He has also given us the things of the spiritual. The spiritual gifts that, that allow God to be manifested to a world around us, a dying world, a foreign land that does not know God. So I want to go back through and break this down and I hope that we can see and draw it out that we have things the world does not. But these things that we have are what the world needs. So let's go through and look at this. He said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. I want to, I want to play with that wording a little bit and say, what I have coming to me. We live in a generation, right, that everybody born, I think we come out of the womb these days thinking, I got something coming to me. I deserve something. I don't have to work for it. I don't have to earn it. It kills me at the shop. We'll have these, these younger guys come in and, you know, God forgive me, but I've been there for a long time. I think about David who does a lot of the laying out in the building. He's been there for even longer. And these young guys come in and start causing disorder and disjunction and dissension because they want to be in charge. And they want to be the man. And they want to make the, you know, call the shots and make the decisions when they don't even know how to run a table saw. So it's like you, you, have, to, you have to come into it. You've got you to grow into it. You can't get it too early. And the younger son, he says, no, I don't want to go through life. I don't want to have to wait until my daddy dies. I, I don't want to have to have to work for it and earn it. I just want it now. I just want it now. And I believe that we as Christians a lot of times, I know I do, I think, God, I want to be filled with the Spirit of God. I want to know what spiritual manifestations that I can do. You know, whether it's just healing or, or words of knowledge or, or words of wisdom or speaking in tongues, God forbid, and y'all keep me out. Or interpretations of tongues or whatever it may be. Maybe I have the gift of, of mercy or um, a gift of just forgiveness and love for people. And it's this, this idea of, I want it now. I want to, I want to walk by people like Peter did and, and, and Paul did and all these great apostles of old that when they walked and they cast a shadow. You know, people would get napkins. Imagine just getting a napkin like Paul blew his nose in this napkin and being like, oh, touch it, touch it. You'll be healed. Can you imagine? The shadow's healing. I want it. But if we get it now, we won't properly use it. We won't be able to handle it. 
won't be able to contain it. And so this younger son, he wants his inheritance now. Now we as Christians, do we have an inheritance? Yes. If you are a Christian today, then you are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. That is your sign, seal, promise of an inheritance to come. But I hope that we can all be in agreement through the scriptures that we preach and teach and believe. We all have gifts, a part, just a glimmer of what is to come. We experience now. So we have these gifts of the Holy Spirit, but we have to grow and, and develop and, and put these tools. You, you have to try and heal a couple people and it not work before you realize what was wrong. You, you got to build your faith a little bit before you can go and give mercy and, and forgiveness to somebody and not continue holding a grudge. You know, I can say like, I'm going to, God has given me the gift of mercy. So I'm going to go to this person and say, man, I know what you deserve, but I ain't going to get it. And then we walk away begrudgingly and hold a grudge for all of eternity against the person we apparently had mercy for. So there's a, a growing and a faith building that has to happen to cultivate an environment where we're ready to use our giftings and our callings correctly. So this son, he says, Father, give me what I have coming to me. I want to read uh, just from Psalm 103. Y'all turn there. Psalm 103. I said we weren't going to do a lot, but we'll read a lot. Psalm chapter 103. Very fitting that um, Sarah and, and Jesse led us in this psalm. In the Psalm chapter 103 it says this, Have in your mind what I have coming to me. What do I deserve? Bless the Lord, O my soul, all that is within me. Bless His holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all His benefits. Who has forgiven all your iniquities. Who heals all of your diseases. Who redeems your life from dest destruction. Who crowns you with loving kindness. With tender mercies. Who satisfies your mouth with good things. That your youth is renewed like the eagles. Like that honey from the rock washed from the sun. God is providing and taking care of us. God is taking care of us. Forgiving our iniquities. The Lord executes righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known His ways to Moses. His acts to the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious. Slow to anger. He abounds in mercy. He will not always strive with us. Nor will He keep His anger forever. Here it is. He has not dealt with us according to our sins, nor punished us according to our iniquities. For as heavens are high above the earth, so great is His mercy towards those who what? Fear. Fear Him. As far as the east is from the west, so far He removed our transgressions from us. And it goes on to say that we are little... We are small in comparison to God, and He pities us. He pities us. He has great mercy and love for us. And what do we deserve, church? Hell. Hell. We deserve judgment. We do not deserve to know the Father. We do not deserve the gifts, the talents, the blessings, His care, His tender mercies. We don't deserve it. We do not deserve to have our iniquities cast as far as it is from the east is to the west. Yet God gives us what we don't deserve. He exhibits great mercy, great grace, and great forgiveness for those who fear Him. So we don't get what we deserve. So I just wanted to bring that out. This son wants what he deserves. I do not. I want to live in the undeserving way of thought and in a humble mindset that says, praise God, I don't get what I deserve and everything He gives me is a blessing. So He divided to them. We're back in Luke point be made there, did both sons get their inheritance? Yes. According to the scripture, both sons, because the younger wanted to rush things, the older, more mature, I'm going to, I'm filling in the blanks from my mind here, the older, more mature, more wise, more, I've been with the father a little bit longer. I, I've seen how he acts. I, I know that I'm safe here. I know that I can trust him. To, to be kind to me and to take care of me even better than his servants that got it so good. So the younger son, he gets his inheritance. The older son also gets his inheritance. So sons and daughters of the king, do we all receive blessings from heaven? Yes. yes. We all have 
gifts from God. We all have blessings from God. We all are filled with the Holy Spirit of God. It's our gift. It's, it's just, a, like I said, a glimpse, a glimmer of our inheritance. A promise of what's to come. So he divided them his livelihood not many days after. So it didn't take very long. The younger son, he gathered up all that he had and he journeyed to a far country. And there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land and he began to be in want. I want to, this is where I said I'm going to get a little uh, different. Because I believe we could look at this very easily and say, man, he took blessings of God. I think we think of money. Because um, that would be the inheritance that this child received. And I think about us as children of God. Sometimes money comes. And it does. Sometimes great wealth is poured out on Christians. And they have to steward that wealth. Sometimes it's great fame. Sometimes, you know, it's all these things that would be uh, worldly wealth. We, we could view it as. I don't believe anybody in this church, <laughs> unless I just don't know you very well, has got the millions upon the millions. I think we'd have a building by now if you did. <laughs> so, and we're in the same boat, probably in a lot less smaller John boat. But we're in the same boat. But I know that God has gifted me with some powerful and mighty tools of the kingdom. Come on, Pat. I know. I said, that's a joke. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that at church, but that is a joke. I told Jesse, just to fill the church in, that I want to be called Cat. I don't know why, but Cat Lee. So in 50 years, they'll say to me, hey, there's Cat. People say, how did he get that? Oh, which is always called him Cat. But anyway, a, I like cats. I like the, I like the hoodies. <laughs> So, man, where was I at? We are all filled, Holy Spirit filled, powerful, mighty, weapons of righteousness. Manifestations of the Spirit will come if you commit your way to God. I believe if we fear God, He is going to continue to fill us up, fill us up to where when we, when we serve and we minister, extensions of us are going to come out and people are going to encounter some power. People are going to encounter a risen God, a risen Savior. But if we squander it, so I, I have the gift, I believe, unless somebody corrects me, I believe I have a gift to, to preach. I believe I have a gift to, uh, with music. I believe these are things that God has given me. And if I'm to stop pursuing God, so this foreign land, I believe we live in a foreign land, but say I take my gifts that God has given me of public speaking, of, of playing the instrument. And I say, you know what? I'm going to go, and, you know, i got some friends that's starting a band. I take my gift over here and I start playing with a band, which I would love, but I'm not going to do it. I start playing with a band and, and, you know, we're having a good time and things start taking off and before long, I, we, we don't even know what's happened, but it's blown up and I'm using my gifts of public speaking and my gifts with an instrument to praise myself. To bring glory and honor to a band. To, to neglect what God has given me a gift to use. And I'm using it for all of the wrong reasons. I believe if you do this, you're going to find yourself at some point feeling very neglected. Feeling very dry. Very uh, overwhelmed. Like you're in a place, a desert place. And in very much a sense of, I need something. Because we all have, I believe we all have this place in our soul that only God can fill. And as we as Christians, we've placed our faith in Jesus and that hole is filled up. It's very important, even though it's filled up, that we stay plugged up. So if you don't stay plugged up and you unplug, you're still, you're still filled, but you're not connected to the source of power anymore. So you're going to go into these areas and you're like, man, I know I'm gifted with this stuff. And I'm doing it. Like it's working. The band is growing. People love to hear me talk in between songs. But what is happening? Why do I feel like I'm empty? Why do I feel like my life has no purpose? Because you're not doing the purpose that God has given you the gifts and His talents and abilities. You're wasting away. You're living as a prodigal. You're taking the gifts that God has given you and using them to glorify God the world represents. We have to be cautious as Christians. I believe if God, me and Sarah made a pact a long time ago, if, if anyone calls us to sing, we'll go do it. Because it was, it was one of these things that we just kept saying no. 
no, 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 I'm not. Like, we were like, we hated to do it. It's like Sarah, I think, liked it. I just hate it. That's why I don't want to get up and sing in front of these people. Why can I get up and sing? I don't even know them people. I don't want to go sing at that thing. I remember uh, Bethlehem Baptist Church was around that season when we said, okay. And they were like, we want y'all to come sing. I don't want to do it. I don't want to do it. It's like, okay, we'll do it. How many songs? One or two? Uh, about uh, 45 minutes worth. Like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> I finally said yes to this. I was expecting, you know, like 10 minutes. Now I got to learn. 45 minutes worth of, I think we did 13 songs in that church, and I about lost my hearing because the speaker like broke, and it's like, golly, ministry costs, doesn't it? And so it's this, this idea that, that we need to say, yes, if you see a little spark or ember of what God has given you, a gift, I keep going to healing. I, I want to see some healing. I, I believe that is just, I've witnessed it, I've been a part of it before, experienced it, and it's something about that that is otherworldly. Because it is. It comes from a source that's in heaven. And to see that and to see people go, I can't explain what I just seen. I can't explain what just happened. Like, explain this. And it's like, dude, it's Jesus. Holy Spirit inside of me. That's what caused it. So, there is a way to, to spread this love to the world. So, don't squander. If I was making points, I don't have any. Don't squander. You give. If God has blessed you with money, spend it on good things. <laughs> Don't squander your money. Look at how can I sow my money into the kingdom of God? How can I use my money to expand the reaches? You know, the Father, He had this place, right? I believe He had a very nice place. I would think it was a big house. Um, scripture would tell us, you know that song? It's a big, big house. Lots and lots of all this stuff. The Father's got a big place. He wants the borders of His fence line to just keep, keep running, keep expanding here on earth. So He divided all that He had to them. Don't squander what God has given you. I beat that to death. We'll move on. So the younger son gathered all together. He journeyed far away. When he has spent all. So this is that. I don't know if any of y'all have ever experienced it. I've experienced it in ministry before. We can get so busy working using the gifts and the talents and the things that God has given us. So, oh, I'm working for God, but I feel depleted. I feel like I'm depressed. I feel like I got no... In God, it says that God, would, if I would do what He's called me to do, I'll have the strength to do it. Why do I feel powerless? Why am I failing? Why is it not working? And I say that we can get so busy called up doing God's work that we forget about Him. We forget that, oh... I still got to go to the source. You know, I could get up here and preach and give y'all my worldly wisdom. I could give you things that I believe and I think. And we might could build a big old church. Two, three hundred people come to hear Michael Lee's thoughts. That is not what God wants. God wants us to, to preach His Word. What He has to say. What He has to get through. The message that He wants to, to just get to the body. To build up the body in the way that He sees appropriate. And so I say that even as Christians that are doing the work of God, remember, if you're using your gifts, so we, we want to use the gifts, we want to steward them well. When you start using them and you put it into practice, day-to-day -day practice, don't forget God. Don't forget you still got to stay plugged in or you're going to find yourself spreading your message. You're going to uh, be spreading false doctrines if you don't stay plugged in to God. You've got to stay connected to the source of power. So then he went... So this is my, I say this guy at this point would have been okay. He's, he's, he's went, he's spent, and he's squandered. And now he begins to be in want. So he recognizes a problem. He says, okay, I, I had great things. My father had blessed me. Now I'm feeling very empty. I'm in want. I need some things. Where did the song, the song that we sang this morning, where do we go when we're in need? The father. The Father says that He knows what we need even before we ask for it. It says that He is a loving Father. He wants to bless us. He wants to give to us. But if we don't ask for it, if we don't go for it to Him, we'll stay in want. We won't get what we need. So what does the Son do? I believe this is a critical error. And I think that we, me, all of us, do it. He went and joined Himself to a citizen of that country. 
and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. So this is a son of the Father. I'm going to say a son of God that has went and tied himself to a citizen of a foreign land. So he's no longer impacting the, the foreign land or the foreign people, the lost, we'll say, with the ministry and kingdom of God. He's actually allowed himself to be joined to them. He's actually allowed himself to say, I know the Father's work. I know my Father has fields. I would rather tie myself to you and work in your field, do in your bidding. And I believe we have to be very careful that as people identify and see our gifts, our talents, or our money, <laughs> that they will start to say, hey, you know, I could use you here. You could do a good work here. So if God has given you a role, I believe God has given us all a role to play. I believe He's given us, I know I'm called to be at a cabinet shop. I know I'm called to be a dad. I know I'm called to work at this church. If anything pulls me away from those three, I know in this season it's not God. It's not His will for me to leave these these three roles. So if something has to come in and it's going to pull my attention and focus away from that, I have to stop and think, has God changed me? You know, like, is He moving me from this season to a, a new season? Or am I going to start plowing in somebody else's field? There's only two choices. Of, you're going to either serve God or you're going to serve Satan. It doesn't look like Satan. It may be innocent in appearance. But if you're not serving God, you're plowing fields for the enemy. You're plowing fields for the other team. So he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country. And it sent, he sent him into his fields. So it says he would have gladly. So he goes from feeling empty to saying, okay, cool, I found a solution. And he would have gladly filled his stomach with the paws that the swine ate. And no one gave him anything. If we try to cultivate or change our life for the better and God is not in it. I don't care what the physical looks like. You will be left with nothing. It will go from a life of lack and a life of severe want to a life of complete emptiness. A pit that you found yourself in that everywhere you look, you can't find happiness. There's nothing to bring you peace. Everything is in turmoil, whether the outside surface looks like it or not. I have friends, and I've spoken about it before, who are millionaires. 30 years old, millionaires. They are not at peace. They are not happy. Every time I talk to them, I'm like, I know the solution. <laughs> Dude, trust in Jesus. Like this is what you, you're you're sowing your own field. It's going to continue. You're going to reap what you sow. If you keep on sowing into this life and this world and working those fields, you're going to continue to reap unhappiness. You're never going to get enough. And Jesus is saying, work in my fields. Use the gifts and the talents, the things that I've blessed you with to cultivate the kingdom of heaven. And that's where you'll find... It doesn't matter if you're in a field filled with swine and with no food. You have peace of this unexplainable variety. You can be in any situation or circumstance and God can give you peace and joy if you're working for Him. So you can't base it off the outside circumstances. And I think this guy found him in a place where the outside was bad. The worldly circumstances were bad, and his physical was bad, his spiritual was bad. He was in dire need of help. It's my hope, my prayer, that none of us have to hit rock bottom before we realize a need for repentance. Remember the one main thing, these, these parables of the lost sheep, the coin, the son, <coughs> they're all preaching the same thing. When we have that aha, we're going to read it, moment, quick as you can, repent Turn back to the Father and commit yourself to His work. So here's His big aha moment. He came to Himself. Like all, all of a sudden, has anybody ever had one of those moments? I've been doing stuff before and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Somebody, turn the light. Like I, I'm so glad the light's finally, I can see clearly. What's that? There's another song. I can see clearly now. The light is on. We'll say this. <laughs> that, that aha moment, like there is a problem here. I've known it's a problem. But I've been fighting it. I thought that there could be a little bit of happiness. Or there could be a little bit of good that would come from this situation. And, and I've been sowing in it and sowing in it. And I knew the whole time it was wrong for me. And now I'm finally waking up from it. Now I'm finally saying that I'm squandering my time. 
My family is suffering because I'm sowing into this. I'm squandering my money and sowing into this. I'm squandering everything I got, pouring everything I got till I'm left in severe lack, severe want. Man, I got nothing. And now I'm finally going to say, okay, I get it. God is obviously not blessing what I'm doing. I'm going to turn and go another way. And that other way is back to God. So he says, when he came to himself, he said, how many of the servants, so his father's servants, have enough bread to spare, but I perish with hunger. I think if we neglect to steward our gifts well, spiritual gifts, we will end up in a state where our spiritual side is perishing with hunger. If we don't stay in constant contact with the Father, I will arise and I will go to my Father and I will say to Him, so this is the answer. If you find yourself in a situation or, or going towards a place where you say, I'm no longer glorifying God with what I'm doing. And it might not even be a bad thing. We're going to get to that with the elder son. I will arise and go to my father and say, so here's the answer. Father, I have sinned against heaven. And I have sinned before you. And this is a cool thing. is We can say, I was never worthy to be called your son. I was never worthy to be called your daughter. Yet I know and I understand that you do not deal with me according to my iniquities. You do not deal with me according to my, my sins against you. That you are full of grace, full of mercy. And I am acknowledging that I need you. I am acknowledging that I, my ways were wrong and I want to commit myself back to your mission. Expanding the kingdom of heaven on the earth. We're plowing and growing the Father's fields. So it further goes on, and I, I, I see the, the heads are starting to nod, so we're going to skip a little bit. <laughs> but you know, it goes on to say that the Father was looking. You know that God is always seeking for repentance. That God is never waiting. I think sometimes we get in this place where we're like, man, if I, were, if I go repent, to, if I confess my sins to God, what about discipline? Like I've read it. You know, the God disciplines, I don't want to face the, the, the discipline might be worse than the unhappiness and the depression. I might just swallow in this pit to avoid that God is never, huh? that's, that's, that's a scary thing to say, never. If I'm wrong, I'm sorry, but I believe God will never seek to punish His children. It's always love. If He's going to give you some discipline, it's different than punishment, I think, or just like out of anger, like wrath, like my kid does something wrong and I'm like happy. That I get to lay one on them like, oh, I just needed the opportunity. That's not God's nature. It's not who God is. God is waiting for you to come so you can say, man, I've had a hug wait. I've had, it says he put a robe on him. He restored to him that, that sonship. We take it off. We lay it down. We take off the ring and say, I don't even want to, I don't want people in the foreign land to even know I belong to you. And he said, if you'll just repent and come back to me, I'll dress you back up. It's immediately, immediate. And I think, whatever level you at spiritually, whatever, I, I believe we're all different. Some people got enough spirit that they just stand in a little puddle like, ooh, that tingles in my feet a little bit. <laughs> Some people so filled up, we're glowing. I, I think I'm bad in the middle. I'm bad at waist high, maybe at the knees. But we all have a level of spirituality that we've reached. And as soon as you repent, God's like, bam, you're right back. Right back to where you were. He's like, thank God. You know, you are here. You are ready. You repented. I'm ready to take you higher. I'm ready to take you into better place. I'm ready to use your repentance to just make your faith abound. To take you to places. But you got to get up. And you got to start working. And you got to start plowing my fields. It's time to get to work. And so this, this idea that God restores us. He loves repentance. And He's not waiting. So I'm saying, if you think God's got a big old help in Him, Fanny smack. I wouldn't think about that. I don't believe God's looking to punish nobody. It says that Jesus came into world to the world not to condemn the world, but through Him the whole world would be saved. That doesn't sound like a God is waiting just to lay one on you to me. Right. So I'm saying repent, come back to the Father. It's through Jesus, a faith placed in Jesus, you get back to the Father and say, I'm ready to get back to work. I've been doing my own thing. I've been plowing my own fields or plowing somebody else's fields. It wasn't yours. I'm ready to get back to work for you. I want my talents and my abilities and gifts and these blessings that you've given me to expand the kingdom of God. That's what I want to get busy doing. So he repents. He comes back. 
father starts throwing this big hoopla of a celebration. So here it is. I know this guy always gets a bad rap, but man, do we not fall into this category? The one doing the work. The one doing the work. We, we said, man, I've been here. I've been plowing your fields. I've been preaching. I've been, I've been singing, and I've been leading people and worshiping, and I've been calling people and, and texting people. And then this, you, you just going to save this guy and bring him right up next to me and start using him to, like, no. I ain't even getting, I ain't even talking to him. I'm shunning him. And God's like, do you not understand? It says in Scripture that heaven, all of heaven, glories over just one person repenting and coming into the kingdom of God. It is a big deal. God, I know in the lost sheep story, it's not about percentages, but you know that God is glorifying over one lost sheep coming back to the fold. We're just going to assume the 99 were very well taken care of and in the gate and it was shut while that shepherd went to look for that one lost sheep. Now I'm the one of the 99 going, what about us? Why can't you stay here and shepherd us? It, he, he wanted to run out the gate. He shouldn't even went out the gate. Our heart has to be. Man, I hope he finds him. It says that God is seeking. He is searching for the lost. Where's our heart? Is our heart searching and seeking to expand the kingdom and, and to find the lost. As God is finding, He is hunting down the lost. In that lost coin parable, it says, He's calling friends and He's getting the whole team together. The whole team together to go find this one coin. He's got nine other coins. Why is this one? It is precious. Souls are precious to God. And they should be precious to us. They should be precious to us. So I want to end with that encouragement. Not in the message. Don't get excited yet. Somebody's... <laughs> Somebody's uh, heart rate just went up and they said, Ooh, I'm excited. It's almost over. We're almost done. Okay. 45 more. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Cat's bringing it. You've ruined me. I told you I'd be cat, man. Ruined me. I'll be cat. Cat now. So I just want to say that we have to be very careful. To not fall into that place to where we view other people come into the kingdom. Or we view that somebody, maybe somebody really does it. They start pouring in to the kingdom of heaven and God blesses them. You know, they start using their gifts and their talents. Not to just, I, I think this guy got so focused on, I know what's right and I know what's wrong. I'm not going to, I'm going to do the right thing. I'm going to do what my father tells me to do. I'm going to do exactly. And they get so focused, like I said earlier, so focused on the work that they forget they even live at the father's house. And so we have to be that kind that, that says, I'm doing God's work, but not without him. Right. He's the one that's got to give me the power to do it. Mm -hmm. So we're still spending time with the father. And even if the work goes undone, it's more valuable to spend time with God than it is to get busy working without it. So we got to make sure the spirit inside of us is cultivated that we're filled up before we start going and doing the work. I, I know sometimes we say just, just start and just try. But you got to get that personal walk with Jesus going first. Mm -hmm. I would encourage you, if you've never witnessed to a person, I would say start praying and reading the Bible first. Don't go out. I know in our, our discipleship, <coughs> class, you know, we say uh, share the testimony right after salvation. There's a reason. Because when the first time somebody gets saved, you know what they're filled with? For the first time, the Spirit, the Spirit of God. To go out and tell somebody, man, I'm changed. What bigger of a witness? To go to people that know you and say, I'm no longer the same. I'm different. I'm different than I was a week ago, a day ago. I'm changed. Us Christians have been in the game for a while. Seems like that Spirit starts to dwindle and that flesh starts to rise up, I say, we better get the essentials back to being the essential before we go out and start blaspheming or, or making God in His nature. I know a lot of times if we was out like this elder son and saying, you're going to go to hell. The way you live is going to send you straight to hell. You better get right. You better do the right thing. You better do like me. I'm out here working and doing it right. We're going to guide. We're going to show people, oh, here's the gates of hell. You know, us yourself on in unless we go with love. That's why it's so important to attack because the Spirit of God's coming. He's saying, 
I know you're headed to hell. I want you to not go to I, I want to express to you, and it might just be by love at first. Might just be extensions of that, that spiritual gift. If you don't have mercy, maybe you leave them people alone. You know, they say like, "I'm going to extend this mercy and some grace and forgiveness because you don't deserve it." But I know now through God's work, I don't either. I deserve hell just like I believe you do because you're one of God's created beings, and it all belongs to God. So I'm going to show you what I know, and it's keeping people valuing those souls more than we value looking busy. We can look busy all day long, but if people are walking by us and they're not encountering God, we're not doing the work. Not doing the work. So I'm going to cap it off. It says, he said to him, Son, you are always with me. Once we're saved, we have the Holy Spirit. Are we always with God the Father? Yes. Whether we want it or not. He's always with us. He would never forsake us. Never. We cannot lose our son. I don't even think daughtership's a word. But if it is son or daughtership, we're always going to be His children. We can't lose it. But I, I believe that we can break that fellowship. We can break it so easy. We can choose to be a prodigal and waste the gifts and go another way and, and start working and plowing another field very quick. All that I have, all that God has belongs to us. You know how, impact, you know how big that is? That is huge. If we, Where is God? Heaven. Heaven? Where's Jesus? Heaven. Like you don't think that the, the heavenly things are ours. Right now, the kingdom of heaven is it belongs to we're part of the family. It's our inheritance. And we've already we didn't earn it, we just get it. And we can have if we would just accept it. It's hard to think that all I have, all, all God, God's got unlimited resources. You mean all that is mine? Yeah. To do his work. To do his work. Not to accomplish yours. It was right that we should make Mary and be glad. Your brother was dead and alive again. He's lost and found. I'm going to close with, with some reading out of Romans. I'll, I'll try my best not to preach it. But I wanted to read it. In Romans chapter 1. Is, there, is anybody going to be upset if I read a little bit too much? No, sir. Go ahead. All right. So Romans chapter 1, I'm going, to, I'm going to read in verse 18. Just remember what we've been talking about. We don't deserve what we got, but we got it anyway. And we should be spreading God's kingdom. It says, The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who suppress the truth and unrighteousness. Because what may be known of God is manifest in them. It's manifested in God's children. God, the presence of God. For God has shown it to them. For since the creation of the world, His invisible attributes are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so they are without excuse. Meaning, even the creation declares the glory of God. And I believe that we are part of God's created. And so what is our job? Declare it. Declare it. Because all they, although they knew God, they did not glorify Him, nor were they thankful. They became futile in their thoughts. Their foolish hearts were darkened. It sounds like to me the, the young son, the, the prodigal we call him, the lost son, his thoughts became dark. He started being drawn another way. Professing to be wise, they became fools. They changed the glory of the incorruptible God into an image made like corruptible man birds, four-footed animals, and creeping things. Therefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness. Well, God, do we have free will? Yes. Will God let you go where you want to go? Yes. I believe He will. I believe God will let you go and wallow as long as you want to, all the way to heaven. All the way to heaven. I believe the whole time, though, you're wallowing and not doing anything. I believe God is nagging. I like right? the contentious woman. That's a terrible illustration. But I think about it. And I think sometimes, you know, we do wrong. But what good? And this marriage is great. It really is. And, and when I'm doing wrong, you know Sarah's not just sitting there going, it's okay. Just do it. Just do it. She'll let me do it. But I'm going to hear it. God's the same way. He'll let you do it. 
He'll let you go anywhere you want to go. Do whatever you want to do. He's going to be there the whole time. That quiet, gentle voice saying, you, you know better. You know better. And then hopefully we repent before it's too late. I believe before it's too late. Before we're of no heavenly good. He gave them up to uncleanness and the lust of their hearts to dishonor their bodies among themselves. They exchanged the truth of God for a lie. And they worshipped and served the creature. I believe this is plowing the field of, of, of the foreign land rather than the Creator who's blessed forever. And I'm going to skip because I don't even want to get into that stuff. But I'm going to go to the back. Uh, I'll start at 29. It says, Being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful. I just want to cap that off and say all those things are the exact opposite of one field with the Spirit of God. You can take every one of those and go back through it and say, man, I am righteous. Because of God, because of justification, because my faith is placed in you, I am made righteous before God. That, that sexual immorality, I'm in a good place with God when it comes to sexual immorality. I'm not doing any of the things that the Spirit of God, when, when I even think about it, it burns within me. Don't do it. It says that sexual immorality is one of the only things that, that binds us to another human being. That will actually, it's, just a, term, it's, a, it's a big deal. The things that you do and that sexual uh, boundary. Not just having sex, but just the lustful thoughts. You know, Jesus broke it down for us. Wickedness. You can say, I'm not wicked. I'm not, my thoughts aren't wicked. Like, I'm out for people's good. I'm, I'm looking for souls to save. This, I'm not coveting because I'm content <coughs> with everything that God is. Whether I'm in the swine field or in the mansion. I go in some of these big houses we're installing in, I'm like, man, I can't even talk to them. Like, they're way out of my league, you know, stuff like that. Whether I'm in the swine field or the mansion, like I'm content with what God has given me. I'm not malicious, I'm kind, you know. I'm not full of, of envy. Like I want other people around me to be blessed. Just to go through, I don't have a heart for murder or strife or deceit. I'm not whispering or backbiting. I'm not hating God. I'm living for God. All these things that, that is listed here in Romans, that the Spirit of God should be manifesting in the exact opposite. And that if we can commit our way to God, we're going to see these, these things, these attributes coming. It says, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, those who practice such things are deserving of death, not only do the same, but approve of those who practice them. So that last line, approving of those that practice them, I believe is as ambassadors for Christ in a foreign land. As we go out, we are not to give our approval, our stamp of that's okay for you and your family, but not, we're not to do that. We are to not approve of anything on that list. And it goes back, I skipped some. If you want to read, go back and read that stuff, it's a long list. We're not to be approving of sin. We are to be expanding the fence line, like I was saying, that, that God's kingdom should be growing on earth. We're not doing these things. We're, we're committed to being spirit-filled and looking like a manifestation of the spirit there's spiritual gifts. I didn't get really deep into that, but we all have... If you are a Christian, you have a spiritual gift. That's 100% guarantee. And if you don't know what it is, it's because you're not pursuing God enough. I promise. You have a spiritual gift. You might have two or three or four or five. If you pursue God, all of a sudden you're going to be like, man, I feel a burden to tell this dude that I don't even know at McDonald's to go left. And you're going to be like, what? It's just going to happen as you pursue God. You're going to go, Sarah's experienced, Sarah has experienced a man coming up to her family and yelling something that was an answer to prayer for their family. I'm telling you, if you pursue God, there's going to be giftings and things that you, words of knowledge and faith that you don't even have a, you'll walk up to people and say, man, your, your legs hurt, man. Like, what? How do you know? I haven't told you. It's, Crazy stuff. Stuff that we can't explain. But if you don't know, it's because you're not pursuing. You start pursuing, you find out. If you don't want to know, don't pursue. You don't have to do anything. 
You can be a child of God and do your thing and plow your fields and, and when we die, you'll go to heaven and He will put a robe on you, put a ring on you, take you into heaven, welcome you with open arms. I don't believe any of us are called to make it in as if going through fire. We're not. We are called to expand His kingdom, to be busy doing His work and stewarding our gifts well. We should not be like the prodigal. So that's the message today. I'm sorry I didn't have all kinds of backdrop and extra, met, you know, scriptures and places we was going. But I felt very firm or affirmed that God wanted me to say our gifts should be used to glorify Him in front of other people. I know a lot of times people say, like, I don't pray out in public because God says that I should make a spectacle. Make a spectacle out of following God. That's what the world around us needs. They need Christians living like they fear God. And if we fear God, we're going to do the things of God. If we fear God, we're going to. It's my. Y'all can hold me accountable. Sarah's going to this week. We're supposed to go to eight to five next week. My prayer time and my study time has been neglected because I've been allowing another man's field. To be the one that I'm plowing. Next week, y'all can hope y'all can ask me. You see me midweek, or just send me a text like, "How's that prayer going?" Text me, text me tomorrow. <laughs> How's that prayer time? Jesse will do it too. He'll say, "Cat, how's that prayer time this morning?" And I'll be like, "Oh, either I'm gonna be like, man, it was good. Man, it was good." So I'm gonna encourage y'all. Don't be either one of them boys. And if you are one of them boys, we know the answer. You can't say that it's fell on deaf ears because y'all have heard it. I have heard it this week. We are in one of those places. The son that's doing the work without God. That's upset when, when, lost, when lost people are saved. If we're in that place, repent. Because your heart is, is not like God's. Your heart is far from what God wants. He wants people to know Him regardless of who they are, their backstory, or where they're at. He wants the one in that situation to repent and, and get, let that mercy, that grace, that loving kindness God has showed us because we don't deserve it, let's extend that to people. And if you're in the other boat, the other category of, of the, the son that has received a great inheritance, we, we have a great thing to look forward to in heaven. Great things right now that if you've received these great things and you've come to a place that said, man, I'm not using any, I mean, there's all kinds of places and avenues. There's Facebook, all these social media. I'm not on them, but I know you can use them. There's all these ways and people that you meet and, and ways to use gifts and talents. Don't squ Oh, sorry. Don't. I'm getting thirsty. Don't squander your gifts. Don't squander and, and just waste away your talents until you feel just dead inside, spiritually dead. So that's the message today. I, I'll, I'll be over there if you want to pray. Uh, if you want to come down front and pray, um, Sarah and Jesse are going to lead us in a, a closing song. Um, but I thank y'all for coming today, and, and I hope that God has spoke to you through His Word. So let's pray. Uh, Father, we just thank you for Your Word. Um, Lord, I thank you that you desire repentance more than you desire, because you don't, to punish us. Lord, it would, it would not be in your nature for us to repent, for us to want to turn back to you and you to condemn us. Lord, I pray that we would ignore the voice of the devil that tells us that you have great pain and suffering coming to us to, to pay back what we owe if we were to repent. And Lord, we know that Jesus has paid for the sins that we have committed and for the sins of the whole world. If we would just lean into that and press into that and repent and accept that forgiveness you are willing more than willing to restore to us our son and daughtership that we never lost it's just we took off the road Lord I, I pray that we would be people today that say I want to look like a Christian and smell like a Christian and do Christian things once again that I, I've lost my way I, I've been wayward I've started to, to plow another field but Lord today I'm committing my way back where it belongs, and that's to you and your work. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.